Hi everyone, it's Miss Queen Crypto. I am back again for another episode of Friday Block Talk here on the Emily channel. Happy to be back as always. Happy to see you again if you're a returning viewer. If not, welcome to the channel. Appreciate having you here. So today we're going to talk about proof of work versus proof of stake. It's a pretty important topic and concept to understand when we're talking about cryptocurrencies and trying to decentralize something. So it's an important conversation to have and have a working knowledge of it. So here we're back with another fundamental type of lesson. So we're going to get into kind of what each one means and the implications of both when we're talking about a decentralized cryptocurrency. So with that, let's get into it. When we're talking about cryptocurrencies, we're really talking about blockchain technology as cryptocurrency is the main implementation of blockchain technology that we have today that is actually usable. And so if you haven't watched my blockchain basics video, that might be a good video to start off with because I talk about the like kind of the ins and outs of the Bitcoin blockchain. However, a key part of any blockchain is that you need a way in order to verify that the information coming in is valid. Don't trust, verify. So proof of stake and proof of work are both two methods of, of validation that a cryptocurrency can use. And so they differ in slight ways, but they get the same goal done. However, there are kind of different like implications of either one. So you have advocates of proof of work and you have advocates of proof of stake. We're seeing a trend in newer cryptocurrencies where most are proof of stake going forward. However, the grandfather of all cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin, is sticking true to proof of work. And I'll get into why that might be the case in a little bit. With a proof of work system, you basically have miners competing against each other to solve a cryptographic puzzle. So with Bitcoin, that's the long string of numbers and letters that each computer is trying to randomly guess and the first one to solve the puzzle gets the block reward. And so you have computers all around the world that are competing to solve that single puzzle. So each of those computers, theoretically, if they had the same hardware, have the same odds, the same probability of getting the block reward. So that leads that inherently leads to decentralization because you don't have any single entity holding more weight than any others. Obviously, with differences in hardware and you have some mining rigs that are faster than others, and that's just part of the game. That's something that happens. You get into an arms race of trying to build the fastest computer that has the best odds. But on a theoretical basis, there is no one miner that has more hold more like say than anyone else. That's not the case in proof of stake and we'll get into that. However, because no single entity has more power than anyone else, that directly feeds into the decentralized nature of any system that's using proof of work. Now let's get into proof of stake and talk about the differences there. So proof of stake is different in that users have to put up their crypto as collateral. And so the more crypto that you put up as collateral, the higher your odds are of being chosen as getting the reward. So basically the system in, under proof of stake just kind of randomly picks one person and the more you have at stake, the higher your chances are of getting picked. So why would, why would a cryptocurrency go for this over proof of work? Well, because you don't have miners competing for the same block over and over again consistently, which requires energy, you end up having a less energy expending system. So you don't have to be consistently solving puzzles. You put up your stake and you go, all right, I'll just kind of sit back and relax. Obviously you have energy expenditure still because you've, you're running a node. Basically you still have to be competing up to date. You're still receiving information, but you're not completing that same puzzle over and over again. And that's where the big difference between proof of work and proof of stake are. One, it's you have just as much of a chance as anyone else to complete this, given that some people can afford to have more mining rigs and some people can afford to have better mining rigs. But on a theoretical basis, everyone has the same chance. Proof of stake, your chances are greatly increased the more you put at stake. So someone who has a whole lot of money to put at stake is going to consistently get the reward at a higher rate than someone who doesn't. And so that's seen as 
potentially a problem because you're taking away part of that decentralized nature. You're saying that people who have more money are going to have more say in the blockchain because when you get picked, that basically means that your interpretation, you validating the block is right. So people who have more money and more money at stake with the system in the blockchain are going to end up with more coming out of it. And so that's kind of a basic breakdown of both of them. Let's get into why Bitcoin chooses proof of work and why other cryptocurrencies might not. For a second, let's talk about the two main cryptocurrencies in this battle. So you've got Bitcoin, which obviously works on proof of work and has been since the very inception. And then you have Ethereum, which was originally on a proof of work consensus mechanism, however, shifted to proof of stake. Now, why did that shift occur? Well, the Ethereum blockchain itself holds a lot more information than the Bitcoin blockchain does because Ethereum is where we see NFTs being traded and like the, the actual storage of an NFT is obviously a lot more than just a simple transaction. And so it ended up that the Ethereum blockchain is just so incredibly long. Like in order to fully download a node, it's darn near impossible. You need a, a computer with a hefty, hefty processor. But regardless of that fact, it became too energy demanding to have a proof of work system for Ethereum. And that's why proof of stake was transitioned to because it does not require that energy expenditure and it's seen as a greener alternative. Bitcoin has not had that problem. People get on Bitcoin. I've talked about the environmental implications of Bitcoin before, but it has a lot to do with the actual mining process, obviously, and that is a downside of Bitcoin, not a killer for Bitcoin in any means, but a downside. It's not something that's great. However, when we're talking about Bitcoin, it's important to note that the decentralization that you get from proof of work is not guaranteed. We see mining pools that are big, big groups of people who have money and they put money into this pool and they have a bunch of mining rigs and they are trying to bolster their odds of getting the block reward. Block reward is split amongst everyone in the mining pool. So when these mining pools get really, really big, obviously you have a higher likelihood of getting the block reward. And so that forms into a little bit of a centralization period, but theoretically with proof of work, you have a higher likelihood of achieving and maintaining decentralization. With proof of stake, which is what Ethereum is currently running with, that's a lot less likely because the more big players you have in the game, the less likely the rest of the general population is to actually get the block reward and have a say in the system. So if you have someone with a crazy amount of money, a lot of money that they're able to stake for that cryptocurrency, you can have a lot more influence over their blockchain and the outcome of the blockchain, which is scary, but it's important to recognize that both systems have their upsides and downsides. I mean, it's hard to argue against energy expenditure, I, I think at least, because it's something that's pretty, pretty easy to see. However, I do not think it's something that takes away from Bitcoin. I think it's something that we can work towards, and I think it's a solution that we should be putting more effort into, but that is a conversation that I've already had, a conversation for another day. But those are kind of the basics of proof of work and proof of stake. As you can see, this validation is essential to a cryptocurrency and you want to make it as fair as possible. There are multiple things going on when we're talking about this. And so you have to try and take a holistic perspective. And if you are trying to create a new cryptocurrency, it's good to figure out what you want to prioritize and how which consensus method you want to take but that's going to be it for me today i really appreciate you listening i hope you enjoyed the video if you did please leave a like and subscribe to the emily channel and if you'd like to see more content from me in particular i'd love if you followed me on twitter at miss queen crypto but thank you so so much for watching and i'll see you next week bye